Good morning, it's Marty from Haven Creek Woodshop. Today we're gonna to be making a chessboard for a friend of mine from work, so we're making this video just to show him and his wife kind of how it came together. So without further ado, let's get to work. Just kidding, it's already done. But we're gonna be showing the video anyway. First thing we're gonna do is cut our purple heart and maple boards down to the length of the board itself. Then I'll run through the joiner to make sure they're all nice and square and flat. So now I'll cut them down to their final width, which is going to be uh, two inches, so it'll be two inch squares. Here I'm running them through the planer just to make sure they're all a uniform thickness. Not so much that they're the final thickness, but just so they're all the same thickness when I go to glue them up. Now I'm using my crosscut sled to make sure one side is perfectly 90 degrees so that all the subsequent cuts will be uh, nice and square. So here I left my table saw fence at the same width as the previous cuts so they should all be exactly 2 inches square. So I didn't film it, but here I have a similar glue up from the first one, uh, just hard maple. So this is going to be a nice uh, aesthetic looking backer for the bottom of the board. And you'll see in a second here how it all comes together. So this was actually a pretty challenging glue up. Because between the bottom piece, the middle piece of birch plywood, and the top pieces, it's kind of a race against the clock to uh, make sure I put it all together before the open time. I was using a Gorilla wood glue, which only has an open time of about 10 minutes.
Now we're going to get started on the frame pieces around the outside of the board. We're going to do these in the same purple heart that we're using for the dark squares. So here I'm running them through the planer, but this time I'm actually milling them down to the final thickness because you'll see later that the uh, squares are actually raised above the frame piece just a little bit. So once they go together, I'm not going to be able to mill the frame pieces down anymore. So now I'm cutting the groove that the maple inlay is going to fit into. And here you can kind of see how it's going to look with the test fit. So now I'm cutting a groove that's going to be the mortise that's going to fit around the birch plywood in the middle. I was happy to find out on the internet that uh, sanding is also everyone else's least favorite activity in the craft of woodworking. So I'm only going to put you through about 30 seconds of it, but rest assured there was hours and hours of sanding that went into this project. So here I'm taking the excess from my maple inlays and creating some really expensive shims. So here I'm cutting a very tiny groove for the brass inlay to fit into. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit with a chisel. Then I'm going to use a 1 8 inch round over bit to uh, just put a nice edge on this. I use this homemade miter sled on the table saw instead of using a miter saw just because it allows for a little bit more precision. I don't show it in the video here, but each one of these cuts I've done about three to seven times just to really dial in the precision. So the last step in preparing the board for that final glue up is to just really square up the corners of those chest pieces so each one is exactly the same on the top and the bottom. So the frame pieces will fit in nice and perfectly.
So at this point you can see I've been fumbling around for a bit trying to get the frame pieces clamped up nice and square because I intentionally left a slight gap between the frame and the squares to uh, allow for some expansion and contraction. So big thanks to my buddy Adam for letting me use his custom Haven Creek branding iron, but at this point I don't even realize that I'm holding it upside down for the camera like a dummy. So I only filmed a couple of the pieces because as you'll see it's a pretty time intensive process and it's actually kind of repetitive so if you really wanted to watch uh, 32 pieces being made just watch the next 10 minutes and I'll leave. So after I turn the blank down to a nice round cylindrical shape I'm going to mark the exact height of the piece with my digital calipers. Then I'll take my parting tool and make a nice little groove. That'll give me a nice visual reference to make the rest of the piece off of. So next I'm going to use the adjacent piece as a reference to mark some of the design features. So that way that's the least consistent with each other. So once I'm done using my parting tool and digital calipers to kind of give the piece an accurate size and shape, then I'll use my spindle gouge to start knocking down some of the material in between. And then I use my skew chisel for some of the more detailed curves that are in the base of the, each piece. And of course, everyone's favorite activity, sanding.
So here I just put a nice light coat of mineral spirits on it to just get some of the sawdust off, which is just easier to do before I part the piece off. So I didn't show it on camera here, but I just used a standard 3 8 inch drill bit to drill a hole down the top of the piece, and then a camper bit to just give it a little stylization. And now I'm using the bandsaw to create the four grooves on the top of it. So for the knights, I just carved out the base of the piece just like all of the others on the lathe and then just kind of eyeballed, using a picture on my phone, the uh, outermost edges of the rest of the piece that I can carve out later. So using that one as a template, I go to work carving three more of those little hot air balloon shaped pieces. So if you haven't picked up on it by now, this nice little folksy jingle is on a two minute loop. So if you're not sick of it by now, give it another six minutes. Oh, and here comes the claps. And there it is. Isn't that nice and relaxing? And here you can see I'm kind of using my parting tool uh, a little bit of a cheer way to get some of these steep end grain angles where normally you would use a steep chisel or a spindle gouge for that. So any wood turners watching this, uh, don't judge me. And once again, here comes the best part, sanding. More sanding.
I didn't get a video of it, but the next two cuts on the bandsaw leave the night pieces looking something like this. And here are some of the other tools I used to carve out the knights. The Dremel, some files, sandpaper. Uh, I've got the uh, belt sander, thanks to Harbor Freight for not killing me. And the bandsaw. And here you can see a progression of a mostly unfinished piece to a mostly finished piece. So I chose to go with a polyurethane finish because with the purple heart oxidation I thought it would be the best for preserving that color over time. So I'm just going to start with some sanding sealer. So once that's dry, I'll hit it with about a 400 grit sandpaper just to give the polyurethane a nice rough surface to adhere to. And of course, here's our obligatory logo shot. Doesn't that look nice? So for the pieces, I figured this is kind of the lazy man's way of doing it, but uh, I just put the pieces in the can. That way it would give it a nice, even, thick coat of polyurethane. So to preserve the surface of the board, I was going to put these nice little velvet circles on the bottom of each piece. And because each piece is a different size, I had to cut these all out by hand. Super fun stuff. Alright, so there you have it folks, a nice custom made chess board from Purple Heart and Maple Wood. And I feel like I learned a lot making this project, so I hope you guys learned a little bit just watching this video. Alright everyone, thanks for watching, and to answer the question by Mike from the YouTube channel, would you make it? Uh, yes, yes I would. And a big thanks to him for some of the design features and techniques.